The story begins with a guy named Yoon Sung cursing the judge because he got community service and curses South Korean law. He asks the judge if he is doing this because he has no mother and thinks that 200 hours of community service as punishment is too much for stealing a jewelry store. He picks up a chair of the courtroom and stomps it on the floor, yelling that people like judges should be doing work like community service. The police officers immediately rush into the room after hearing the noise of the bang and ask the judge if he is okay. The judge says it's the first time he has seen something like this in 15 years of juvenile cases and orders him to pick up the chair. Otherwise, it'll be treated as an insult to the legal system without the urge of reformation. However, Yoon Sung's grandfather tries to stop him, but he shows a middle finger to the judge forcing him to order the use of juvenile law number 9 against him. The police take Yoon Sung and all the other criminals to Yongchun Information and Communication School, nicknamed Yongchun Detention School. It's a place where all kinds of underage criminals gather together. The officer tells Yoon Sung not to make eye contact with other criminals and walk in a straight line. But suddenly, a guy there recognizes Yoon Sung and asks him if he is the Lee Yoon Sung of Sanjun Middle School. The officer stops Han Jehoon from coming close to Yoon Sung, but he says it's a long time since he has not seen Yoon Sung and tells him to come to Ward B after the roll call. After saying that, Jehoon leaves, and another officer asks Yoon Sung if he is a friend of Jehoon and tells him that Jehoon is not a great guy because he is there for blackmail and sexual assault. Seeing how Yoon Sung is friends with Jehoon, the officer says he must be as stupid as him and smacks Yoon Sung's face with a bunch of papers. He knows that Yoon Sung made a scene at the court and asks him if he wanted to come in there so badly and suggests to Yoon Sung to live in peace there because they'll see each other often. He says he is the correctional officer Lee Gwak Hyun, who will manage all the guys in the detention school. On the other hand, when Jehoon's friend asks if he knows Yoon Sung, he replies that Yoon Sung was famous in middle school for being a loser. After some while, Yoon Sung meets Jin Hoo, and Jin Hoo pulls his hair and asks him if he thinks he is different after coming to Juvie. Jin Hoo says it brings back the old memories of when he used to have a lot of fun and Yoon Sung tried to kill himself in the school washroom. It was because of Yoon Sung that they got charged with school violence. Jin Hoo tells Yoon Sung to remove his pants like in the old days and asks him if he came there because he missed him. Yoon Sung agrees that he misses him and immediately holds his head and kisses him. On the other hand, the correctional officer Lee remembers that a while ago, when he met Yoon Sung, he told the officer that he knew the officer committed statutory rape. The officer got worried that Yoon Sung knew about that incident, and Yoon Sung also knew that the officer met an underage girl on the 6th of March at 1am through an app, tricked her into thinking his car was a BMW, and tried to do something in the car. The officer got scared and asked Yoon Sung why he was there, to which he replied he was looking for someone, a couple of juveniles who ruined his life, and the ones protected by the law. Back to the present, Yoon Sung tears Jin Hoo's mouth and starts to beat him badly, and when Jin Hoo's friend tries to protect him, Yoon Sung hits him down. While beating them, Yoon Sung remembered that his grandfather requested him to apologize to the judge, and he did bow to him, but he still got the detention. Jin Hoo's friends run to call the correctional officer, and Jin Hoo suddenly attacks Yoon Sung with a wooden bar, but it doesn't affect him. Yoon Sung starts thumping his face and instantly holds his ankle and breaks it while saying he learned fighting from someone famous. Jin Hoo yells in pain, his eyes tear up, and he asks Yoon Sung how he can use a heel hook on a real person. Still, Yoon Sung again holds his other foot to apply the heel hook, and while Jehoon begs him to stop because he'll never be able to walk, Yoon Sung ruthlessly twists his foot to break it. Jehoon begs him to stop and apologizes for bullying him, cussing his family, making him a loser, and for everything he did badly to him. Yoon Sung remembers when he went to learn to fight from a guy, and the guy asked him why, to which he replied that the law was shit and he wanted to get revenge. Meanwhile, the correctional officer arrives, running to stop Yoon Sung, and after hearing the warden's voice, Yoon Sung leaves Jehoon's foot. Yoon Sung approaches the warden to tell him a funny story and whispers in his ears that he came there to take revenge but not from Jehoon because the things that he did are not even close to what the curious guy did to him. He came there to meet that guy who had a lot of curiosity. Meanwhile, a guy informs Park saint Yal, a former medalist of amateur kickboxing, who is bullying some guys, that a bastard, Lee Yoon Sung, has broken Jehoon's ankle. In the past, Park saint Yal was a very curious guy and he used to try weird experiments he used to watch online. Once, he saw a video about a drink about which a person couldn't tell if it was the drink or pee, and because of curiosity, he took a glass of the drink and a glass of his pee to Yoon Sung to taste and tell if they were similar. Sang Chial was curious about everything in the world, and one day, 
He watched a video about what would happen if a person ate laxatives and an antidiarrheal pill in curiosity. He used Yunsung to exude his curiosity, although the people commented on the video that it was dangerous and would stop the intestine. Park still forcefully made Yunsung consume the pills. One day, Park and his friends made Yunsung carry all their bags and went to his house because they knew his mother, grandma and Nuna went out. They rushed into his house and turned it upside down while he helplessly tried to stop them. Suddenly, Park checks Yunsung's forehead and asks if Yunsung has a cold because he has been sweating since earlier. Yunsung threw what was wrong with Park, but when he gave him medicine to feel better, he thought of him as a friend for a moment and took that pill, not knowing the effects of the cold medicine. After taking the pill, Yunsung fell unconscious, and he felt like he was floating on water, and even his monster-like friends seemed funny to him. Sangxiao gave him a towel and made him put it in the microwave and made him turn it on, but suddenly a blast happened, and Yunsung's home blew with a blast. After some while, he opened his eyes in a hospital where two officers from Xiaodong police station were present to take his statement. He didn't remember their questions, but his house was completely burned, and his face had a shitty scar. A few days later, when he returns to school, Sangxiao sarcastically comments that it exploded bigger than what he saw on YouTube and tells Yunsung to thank him because he dragged him down to the first floor after the blast. Still, when he doesn't say anything, Sangxiao gets furious at him for not being grateful to him. Yunsung thinks that the scariest thing about bullying is when you meet someone you can't communicate with and that hopelessness when you don't know where to start talking. He thinks that the imagination of that fear makes people give up. After school, he goes to the 119 House of Hope, where his mother and grandmother are, and his mom asks him why he told the officer that he set the house on fire. He tells them that the officers told him all his other friends said it was all his doing. He took a pill and turned the house on fire. His mother asked him what they should do because they couldn't claim the fire insurance, and they could even get sued for insurance fraud. They also couldn't pay compensation for neighbors' damages, their house was screwed, and they were doomed. Back to the present, the warden takes Yunsung to another room where Park Sangxiao is being kept and tells them that some unsavory incident happened, so it's inevitable to change Yunsung's room temporarily. He tells the guys in that room to welcome Yunsung warmly and tells them to help him if he has questions. They can't see Yunsung's face because he is holding a lot of towels in his hands, which are hiding his face, and after the warden leaves, a guy tries to mess with Yunsung, but he kicks him down. The other guys ran to beat him, but from behind the sheets, he said he came there to meet the curios guy and put the sheets down. Sangxiao recognizes him, and Yunsung tells him there is a method to beat a professional kickboxer with one finger and asks Sangxiao if he wants to know that method. Sangxiao replies that it's been a long time since they met, but when he asks him the method, Yunsung replies that he still hasn't changed his curiosity and replies that he'll now tell him the method to beat a professional kickboxer with a finger. Yunsung has a tattoo on his body. And when he got it, the tattoo artist asked what it was about. And he told her that it represented her grandmother, so he never forgot about her. Yunsung asks if Sangxiao understands how a kickboxer like him can be defeated with one finger. But he replies that he has no ideas, so Yunsung tells him to give it a good thought. Suddenly Yunsung takes a spray from the blankets, spray it in Sangxiao's eyes, and kicks him between his legs, making him yell in pain. Sangxiao can't open his eyes because they are burning like hell, and taking advantage of this, Yunsung starts punching his face and kicks him in the stomach. He learned that the basis of fighting is to target the opponent's lower body if he guards his upper body, and attacks the upper body if he guards the lower. Sangxiao tries to punch him, but it's all in vain because his eyes are burning, and he thinks if he can buy enough time to open his eyes, he can beat Yunsung. He starts punching in the air to hit Yunsung. But Yunsung grabs his arm with a towel and twists it, forcing him to get on his knees, then punches his face and smashes it on the ground. Sangxiao's face starts bleeding, and Yunsung asks him how it feels to get beaten with a towel that was just microwaved. Yunsung remembers his grandma went into a coma because of the shock of having her house burned down, and the doctor told that the grandmother acted as if everything was all right in front of her family. Still, her condition got worse when she saw Yunsung's burn mark. Suddenly Sangxiao thanks Yunsung because he managed to clean his eyes with his blood, and now he can see, so he kicks Yunsung back and gets up, saying that he was almost destroyed because of his eyes. He asks Yunsung if he wants to die and tries to kick him again, but he dodges his attacks. Sangxiao manages to corner Yunsung by a wall, and says this brings them back to a time when every time Yunsung was beaten, he made a ringing sound like a bug, 
Sang Chiol says it was cute seeing Yoon Sung wheezing and moaning and says that he'll beat him worse than before because he crossed the line by using spray on his eyes. Meanwhile, Yoon Sung remembers when his fighting trainer asked him where he would get his revenge. He told him about the juvenile detention center. The guy told him it was a place with many regulations and suggested Yoon Sung use a spray to blind his opponent and put something like a blanket on the ground. Yoon Sung follows his instructions, and when Sang Chiol tries to kick him, he trips because of the blanket and Yoon Sung immediately takes advantage of the situation and attacks him. In the past, Sang Chiol made fun of Yoon Sung during a live stream, telling the viewers that Yoon Sung's nickname is Two-Face in school, and that he is the perpetrator of the Dongho district fire. He told the viewers that in the next live, he'd show them Yoon Sung's grandmother, who is in a coma because of him. Yoon Sung can't forget those moments, so he turns Sang Chiol's face into a pulp with continuous punches and break his finger. Sang Chiol yells in pain, but he continues to punch him. He starts apologizing, but it doesn't affect Yoon Sung because he remembers Sang Chiol didn't stop making fun of his grandma. Yoon Sung continues to punch him until his face is covered in blood, and when he stops punching, Sang Chiol asks him what he did wrong, and that they were all young back then, and at that age, they all played and joked around. Yoon Sung grabs fabric clips, stuffs them in Sang Chiol's mouth, and says he noticed that his mouth has always been the issue. Yoon Sung tells him to stop talking because talking is something humans do, and he starts punching him again, remembering all the bullying Sang Chiol did to him. He says that some people might ask him why hang on to the past, and it'll all go away with time, but he says he'll tell them to f and since he didn't like that, he learned to fight. Five months later, one day, Yoon Sung chokes Sang Chiol until he passes out and tells a guy to check on him, and he records that it's already Sang Chiol's fourth time passing out that day. And in the last five months, they have made him pass out every single day for 898 times, and it'll be his 900th time. Yoon Sung tells that guy to shut up and keep the watch, so he immediately tells him that the officers are coming. The officer in charge, Kim Chingoke of the detention center, arrives and yells at number 203 why it's so noisy in their room. But they say that the officer knows very well that the noises are coming from room number 204 and ask the officer why they say nothing to him. The officer tells them to keep quiet and leaves, saying that he will check the CCTV while leaving. He furiously tells the other officer that he doesn't understand why no. 204 gets special treatment. The other officer tells Kim that the chief told them to see Yoon Sung, and they can't do anything, and he tells him to hold it in for a bit because it's less than a week until Yoon Sung goes out. Yoon Sung says that he'll leave that place in the next six days and thinks that if he is to continue with the next plan, he must start its preparations. Meanwhile, an announcement is made for those to be visited to go to the meeting room under the guidance of their teachers. Simultaneously, a pretty lady comes to the detention center to meet Yoon Sung. And during their meeting, she keeps looking at Yoon Sung, but Yoon Sung tells her to stop smiling because it makes him awkward. She tells Yoon Sung that they are playing siblings right now, and for that, she has to face him with a smiling face so they look like a family. Ming says she is supposed to behave like her family but came to visit him wearing a suit. He then tells her to forget that, and when he informs her that Park Sang Chiol is almost done, she asks him how it feels to take revenge and asks if he is feeling a little relieved. Yoon Sung tells her to stop saying unnecessary things and asks her to hand over the material to the next guy. After saying Yoon Sung is rude as always, she tells him that his next target Yongbyomi has moved to Gangnam and is living there. She says he is from a rich family and is the grandson of the hospital director, but the most peculiar thing about him is that he is good at studies and takes good care of his classmates. On the other hand, Yongbyomi's teacher tells him that his grades have improved again and gives him some prints to hand out to class 3 and bring their homework to her. Yongbyomi takes the notes, but suddenly, he notices a ring in the teacher's hand and asks her if she is getting married, to which she replies that she is, and then he congratulates her. She tells him to keep the news a secret to the kids and tells him to leave. On the other hand, Yoonsung's fake sister Joanna tells him that Yongbyom is also a student council member, besides having good grades and winning many competitions. She says he is so clean that his travel route is school, academy, study cafe, and home. She shows a picture to Yoon Sung and asks him if it's of the guy he told her about because she even took that guy's student record, but nothing came out. Yoon Sung sees the picture and remembers when Sang Chiol was making fun of him during the live stream. Yong Byum was standing there, and he asked Yoon Sung about his sister and how old she was and if she was pretty. Yoon Sung tells the girl that Jo Yong Byum is the one who destroyed his life and he might be a model student to others, 
but that bastard does well in cosplaying an ordinary guy. After some while, he returns to the room where all the guys are on their knees in front of him, and one of them tells that Park saint Yeol has not eaten lunch. Yoon Sung again chokes him for skipping meals because it's all tax money, and when saint Yeol apologizes to him, he reminds him not to talk because only humans can talk. Park saint Yeol suffers from speech disorder, frequent attacks of ataxia, impaired concentration, decreased consciousness, shoulder subluxation, and even PTSD caused by repeated trauma. Park saint Yeol has brain damage due to a lack of oxygen and has lost his old intelligence. Finishing his 899th strangle, Yoon Sung thought it was day 6 before he left and he'll be able to fill the remaining time with a thousand times. He told the guys to check the number and bring him some tissue because saint Yeol had pooped. Six days later, he was released, and his pretending sister Miss Joanna received him outside the detention school in a luxurious car. She asks him if he is ready to go right away. While traveling to their destination, a makeup artist does makeup on Yoon Sung's face and tells Joanna that it's her first time decorating a face with such satisfaction in her 22 years of makeup career. They reach outside the school, and the makeup artist puts a wig on Yoon Sung's head, hides his burn scar, and tells him to perform well in school after Joanna made him so pretty. At that point, Yoon Sung thinks he is ready to return to Gangnam Sao High School. When Yoon Sung says his makeup is not bad, the makeup artist tells Joanna he has no manners. Joanna agrees with her, but she says it's fine because everyone at Yoon Sung's age reacts the same way. Meanwhile, Yoon Byum is thinking that the teacher will be married which makes him feel crazy, and he thinks he can't sit by and takes out his phone. But suddenly, he hears some students talking about a transfer student. The students discuss that there is a transfer student in class 3 who looks handsome, and they decide to go and see him. Simultaneously, the teacher of class 3 tells the students to welcome the transfer student Yoon Sung into their class, and Yoon Sung gives them his introduction. The teacher then tells him to take an empty spot in the class and announces that the mock test is just around the corner, so he'll consult with the students after checking their grades and warns them not to joke around and do it seriously. Yoon Sung was walking toward his seat, but suddenly, a student stopped him to tell him that his introduction was fucking annoying and Yoon Sung realized that the teacher had left the class. Park Sung Ho forced that student to say this to Yoon Sung, and told him to ask Yoon Sung again, in a louder voice, why his introduction sounded so annoying. Suddenly Yoon Sung kicks Sung Ho, and when his friends try to attack him, he kicks their faces and starts beating them down. Park Sung Ho gets up to attack Yoon Sung, but he picks him up and slams him on the floor, which shocks all the students in the class. Yoon Sung dusts off his clothes and says that if his introduction sounds too simple, he'll introduce himself again and say his name is Lee Yoon Sung, and he is 18. He tells that he likes reading and exercising, but what he hates is not there. The news immediately spread in the school that the transfer student beat Park Sung Ho and his gang on his first day. While Yongbum and his female classmate are taking notes in the class, she asks him if he has heard about the incident caused by the new transfer student. He replies that he is not interested in it because he thinks the transfer student is another thug from somewhere. She thinks that Yongbum is really like a grown-up because he is not interested in this kind of stuff, and Yongbum tells he doesn't like his school being too noisy and doesn't care who fights who. On the other hand, some guys stop Yoon Sung in the bathroom and one of them asks him if he is the one who beat up their juniors and if is he some kind of athlete. Meanwhile, two guys guard the bathroom door and stop other kids from entering the bathroom. But suddenly, a guy falls on them, breaking the door glass. They wondered what happened, but when they checked the bathroom, Yoon Sung was bashing all the guys in there single-handedly. Yoon Sung notices their branded clothes and asks if it is because they are in Gangnam and says they all seem to have a lot of money. Yoon Sung keeps beating them and says he is jealous of them and that if he knew someone that rich, he would buy one of those shirts too. Suddenly a third-year gang leader Kim Sangwook appears behind him and asks who he is. Sangwook tells that he came because he was wondering what kind of prick touched his juniors, but it seems that there is only a sissy bitch there. Meanwhile, Yongbum and the girl arrive outside the bathroom, and she gets shocked to see Sangwook getting punched by the new student. She says they need to do something and asks Yongbum to go and call the teachers, but Yongbum is shocked to see Sangwook badly wounded because of Yoon Sung's attacks. Suddenly Yongbum leaves from there, but the girl comes after him and asks where he is going after leaving all the notes to her. When she asks if he left because of the fight, he tells Yesul to shut up for a minute because he has something to think about and asks her if she minds going to the teacher's room first, and then he leaves, 
saying to see her later. After school, while Yoon-sun is going home, Sang-wook tells him to follow him and says he'll do whatever Yoon-sun wants. Sang-wook takes him to Yongbum, asking him if he is a transfer student who knocked out some kids right after his arrival. Yongbum says that Yoon-sun is good at fighting, but when he asks about studying, Yoon-sun remains quiet, and Yongbum understands that he is a quiet type. Yongbum says he is a sponsor for kids who are great at fighting and coming straight to the point. He asks Yoon-sun how much money he needs. He says that his family owns some buildings in Gangnam and asks Yoon-sun if he knows the hospital in Gangnam. Yoon-sun remembers that when his house burned down, Yongbum asked him sarcastically if it must be hard for his family to live in a shelter and if they need money. Yoon-sung never forgot that moment for a while, and that's the reason he came all the way there to meet Yongbum. He says he is Lee Yoon-sung and asks Yongbum if he remembers him. He came all the way there to take revenge on him, and Yongbum remembers the time he asked Yoon-sung if he had an elder sister and he remembers Yoon-sung. He removes Yoon-sung's hair to check his burn scar, but when he sees no scar, he thinks the guy is not that Yoon-sung. Yoon-sung says he has the same name as Lee Yoon-sung, whom they bullied during the live broadcast. In the past, Park sang during the live broadcast, told that he was going to unravel the series of brutality that their loser friend Yoon Sung did. He apologized to all the Lee Yoon Sung in Korea during his broadcast because they got criticized for that name. He tells them it's their mother's fault that they named them Lee Yoon Sung and showed them the middle finger. The viewers get offended, but sang tells them to report him if they want because he'll make another channel. Yoon Sung says he wanted to meet Yongbum at least once because he was also in the same group of those bullies who did the live stream. Yoon Sung furiously asked him if Yongbum knew how irritated he was because of that stream. Yongbum gets terrified and asks if he is furious just because of that stream, to which Yoon Sung replies that, of course, and says if Yongbum gives him enough compensation, it might comfort him a bit. He heard that Yongbum was wealthy and said he wanted to see his sincerity and hoped that Yongbum didn't talk carelessly about the sponsorship whatsoever. Yongbum thinks it's ridiculous that Yoon-sun has some nerve to have an equal relationship with him and doesn't want to work under someone. He says that he likes it and asks everyone to go down to the building whose rooftop they were talking on. While coming down, he says it's his father's building, but he is the one who manages and owns it and tells that there are study cafes on its second and fourth floors. He says that the fifth floor is a single-room hotel, which he sometimes gives the runaway boys for shelter. He also tells Yoon-sung that the first floor is a cafe, an underground sauna, so if someone gets tired of studying, he can just go and relax there. He takes Yoon-sung to the sauna, where he meets a huge guy named Kyung-min, and Yoon-sung remembers that once he saw that guy with his sister. Yeong-bum tells Kyung-min that Lee Yoon-sung has the same name as the looser Yoon-sung they knew and tells him that he is completely different from that Yoon-sung because he is good at fighting and got some nerve. Yeongbum is considering making Yoon-sung do a few things for him, but he doesn't like his name and his covering eye like that idiot Yoon-sung. Yoon-sung asks them why they are fighting with him on their first meeting and asks them so what if they don't like him. Hyungmin gets furious and asks Yoon-sung if he wants to get killed, and Yoon-sung dares him to try him. Yeongmum tells them to calm down, yells at them to stop, and asks if they don't want to work anymore or if they are looking down on him. He gives Yoon-sung a task and says it's a kind of Yoon-sung's test because he doesn't trust him 100% yet. He tells him to go to a designated location, bring the kids there, and then leave everything to him. Yoon-sung, following his order, picks up some girls from the street and reports back to Yongbum that he took them to the designated location, told them to provide shelter, and then sent them to the single-room hotel on the fifth floor. He asks Yoon-sung if he told them about the sauna, to which Yoon-sung replies that he did that, and the girls say they'll clean up and come. Yongbum says the fifth floor is like a protection facility for runaway girls. He appreciates Yoon-sung's good work and tells him to follow Kyung-min because he'll tell him about his next task. Yoon-sung starts following Kyung-min and remembers his conversation with Joanna when she tells him that to get Yongbum's trust, he has to get into his group and gain his trust. When he asks Joanna the reason for him joining the group, she replies that they could not simply capture Yongbum for a simple act of violence because he is a person who always has an escape plan ready well in advance. Joanna told Yoon-sung that they needed to bury Yongbum thoroughly and with great care. Hyungmin takes Yoon-sung to a room where some guys are working on the computer. Hyungmin tells them to hurry up and check the driver's licenses those guys made. Hyungmin explains to Yoon-sung that they work there, and when a new guy comes to their shelter, they start by making their fake ID, and with that, they rent a car using their name and then sell it to an illegal car dealer. He says that those punks then owe 50 million won and the identity of an identity theft crime. And not just that, the miners can take out a lot of loan money, and if the kid's parents have insurance, they use that as collateral. 
they put a debt of 100 million won on those kids and then give them three choices. First, their parents will pay it back. And second, Yoon says it is working as an enslaved person under them. Yoon knows that because the punks who brought him to Yongbum seemed like they work because they owe something to them. Hyunmin says Yoon is right and tells that all the kids who have been to the shelter owe Yongbum. He says Yongbum is the only person who controls everything in that area and is unreachable. Human says that the third condition is for the girls who have no money and no power and says that Yongbum prefers older women and he won't touch younger girls. Yunsung remembers that his sister also fell victim to them and told him not to worry about anything before leaving. Yunsung knows everything and that's the reason he came there to personally send them all to hell. Yunsung decides that his revenge will start with Choi Kyungmin, and today will be the last day for his disgusting laughter. Kyungmin gives Yunsung a consent form for protection shelter and tells him to go to the girls from earlier and get their finger stamps because he is now in charge of them. Yunsung notices that, at first glance, the contract looks like a simple protection agreement, but it's mixed with fraudulent loan clauses, and if someone gives it a rough skim through and signs the contract, it gets them on a life-running express train to hell. Human says if the girls are young and pretty, they'll pay back in no time, so there is no need to worry. Human tells Yunsung to take care of it and get their finger stamps on the fraudulent contract while he waits for him. Yunsung enters the girls' room and throws the contracts toward them to stamp their finger on them if they want to live in the shelter. One of the girls gets offended, and they'll leave soon, though, and ask why did he throw the contract. But when the other girl tries to stop her, she says she'll talk because it made her feel shitty and she was told not to sign the contracts recklessly. Hyungman told Yoonsung that getting the girls' finger stamps won't be easy because these days, girls are clever. The girls are clear that they won't sign anything like this, and they'll leave if he forces them and calls the police. Yoonsung realizes that he is not given an easy task and has to get their stamps by whatever means necessary, so he decides to do whatever they want and starts walking towards the door. The girls wonder where he is going and think he is going home because he got scared when they brought up the police but suddenly Yunsun locks the door. After the door gets locked, the girls start yelling at him to open it, and after hearing their voices, Kyungmin rushes towards the room, and after opening the door, he asks Yunsun what he is trying to do. Meanwhile, Yunsun makes them pass out to get their stamps and tells him that one of the girls resisted, but he managed to get her stamp. Kyungmin can't understand what's the deal with this crazy guy and thinks he purposely put the girls in the room with CCTV just to see how well Yunsun does his task but he strangled them right away. He thinks that Yunsung is a complete lunatic, and Yunsung asks if the test they prepared for him works by this point and says he was aware that there was a CCTV in the room. Yunsung says he knows them well enough and that the girls are adult actors that they cast to test him and asks him if the test is over now. In the meantime, Yongbum arrives and apologizes to Yunsung, saying that trust is most critical because of the nature of his business, so they need to verify it. He claps for Yunsung, saying that he likes him and they'll get along well, and tells him not to worry about the girls because they were the girls he brought in the first place. Yunsung knows he must act like trash in front of Yongbum to make him come out of his snake tunnel. Yongbum thinks Yunsung wants to do fun things, so he says they'll start working immediately tomorrow. Hyungmin turns the room's lights off and tells Yunsung to learn well because from now on, he'll be teaching him for real and says that first, They'll start from the rooms of female members. Hyungman takes out a red cellophane, opens his phone's camera, and tells Yunsung to look closely. He shows that when he holds a red cellophane to his phone, they'll see the hidden cameras inside the room. And this is how they increase revenue from girls' rooms. He tells Yunsung to start working and carefully insert the batteries into the locations because it's expensive and be destroyed if he drops them. Yunsung thinks that he is finally completely in Jo Yongbum's crime scene. The crime will begin soon, and he also finished all the preparations, and now he has to work on his next plan. Human says that Yongbum is smart because he made an ant nest just to squash out people like this and that he has been a genius since childhood. Human thinks Yongbum must have committed all internet-related crimes, too, and tells Yunsung that back then. There was a real outcast with the same name as Yunsung's, and Yongbum was relentless in his attempts to bully that guy. He says that the broadcast they shot with the true outcast was all Yongbum's idea because he was always the person who never steps in front, and he manipulates people from behind and skillfully turns them into idiots. Human remembers that the outcast had an older sister, and her family ran out of money because their house burned down. He continues talking about the time he took her to Yongbum and when he is going to talk about her face, Yunsung interrupts him saying that the camera is not turning on all of a sudden and tells Kyungman to look at it. 
Tiungmin furiously tells Yunsung to step aside and ask what he did to the camera, but suddenly, he sees Yunsung holding an extension in his hand. He asks Yunsung why he is holding the cord, but suddenly, Yunsung grabs his arm and breaks it. Yunsung twists the cord around Kyungmin's hand and breaks his fingers, saying it's a relief that Kyungmin is still trashed so that he can go ahead with the plan with complete peace of mind. Kyungmin screams that he is crushing his hand, and when he asks him what he is doing, Yunsung tells him that Lee Nahun is the name of the outcast sister Kyungmin talked about earlier. Kyungmin, while crying in pain, asks why Yunsung is doing this, and Yunsung replies that he will tell him an interesting story and whispers in his ears that Lee Nahun is his elder sister. He repeats that Nahun is her sister, and while twisting Kyungmin's arm, he says he is the same outcast and that girl's little brother. He tells Kyungmin to laugh like he was laughing earlier, but Kyungmin is shocked to hear this. Yunsung says that Kyungmin will be found deceased in that room, but he won't be the one who kills him, Jo Yongbum will. On the other hand, Yongbum's lips are bleeding because he is biting them in anger while watching something on his phone, and he furiously destroys his room. In the meantime, his parents hear him yelling, and his mother angrily opens the room door and asks him what's wrong and what happened. Yongbum apologizes to his parents and says it's just that his grades went down a bit. He says he wasn't expecting this, and that's why he was a bit surprised, and then he closes his room's door. His mother worries about him, but his father tells her he'll be fine because that's how all kids grow up. On the other hand, Kyungmin can't understand what Yunsung is talking about, and when he asks why Yongbum will kill him, Yunsung replies that he played a little joke with the bank book Yongbum gave him. Before leaving, Yongbum gave Yunsung a bank book to use for his monthly salary and told him that all the activity fees and bonuses would be sent to it. Yongbum told Yunsung that the book was in the name of a homeless person. The police won't be able to track it, so he didn't need to worry. Yunsung says he noticed when Kyungmin deleted all of the transaction histories, but he doesn't know that Yunsung restored it, and it turned out that all the linked accounts they used were there. Yunsung found out that Kyungmin ate a lot of Yongbum's money, and that's why all the accounts Kyungmin was related to, Yunsung reported them and got suspended. Yunsung made the account user's death report with Joanna's help using Kyungmin's name, which is why the accounts got suspended. Yunsung says that if Kyungmin tells Yongbum that their fake accounts got suspended, Yongbum will never know why the account got suspended. Yunsung tells Kyungmin to choose wisely because he is giving him a chance and ask if he thinks Yongbum will let him off. If he tells Yongbum about Yunsung, all the money Kyungmin embezzled would be found. Yunsung warns that if something goes wrong, Kyungmin will bear the responsibility of reporting the accounts, and the person fourth generation of Goryeo, Yongbum's knife, will find Kyungmin and finish him. A few days later, as Yunsung predicted, Kyungmin tells Changsu that he suspended the accounts without knowing anything. Still, he doesn't believe him and slaps him down, yelling that he has no right to do anything besides be with Yongbum. Meanwhile, Yongbum is also present there, and he says if there is a traitor among them, then Kyungmin is the main suspect. He says it's not the first time, and only Kyungmin's accounts were suspended. Yongbum tells that he doesn't want to suspect Kyungmin, but the thing is that all the situations are a match, so he asks Kyungmin to tell the truth. Kyungmin says that Lee Yunsung wants him to pretend he knows nothing. On the other hand, Yunsung wishes that Kyungmin keeps his promise, and he enters the room where Yongbum is questioning Kyungmin. Yunsung immediately starts beating Kyungmin, and everyone there gets shocked to see this. He asks Yongbum if he will pull him into the mess too. Still, when Yongbum asks him what he is talking about after barging in like that, Yunsung takes something from Kyungmin's pocket and tells him that he is an addict and they could mess up the entire operation because of him. Yongbum is shocked, and Yunsung starts beating Kyungmin, saying that this addict is responsible for all of Yongbum's money. Kyungmin thinks this is what Yunsung was talking about when he said he'd find a solution to solve the problem and thinks that he is insane. Yongbum tells Yunsung to stop for a minute and asks that he tell him that Kyungmin is using drugs, and that's why the accounts are being suspended, but he can't understand why he is so mad at Kyungmin. Yongbum asks about his intentions, and Yunsung replies that they told him the account was safe, but he is about to lose all the money he put in it. He asks Yongbum how he will take responsibility for his money and tells him to think carefully before answering because he is sensitive about his money. Yongbum can't say something for a few seconds, and then he speaks that money is important and tells Yunsung not to worry because he'll compensate for everything. Yongbum offers him to take over the position that Choi Kyungmin previously held because it seems like Yunsung knows how to handle funds, and they are trying to expand the business too. Kyungmin understands that Yunsung's real goal was to trample him and take his place, and using loopholes of fake accounts, Yunsung created that whole situation. 
he realizes that Yunsung threw him as bait so that he could take advantage of Yongbum's doubtful personality. Suddenly Kwon chang -soo tells Yongbum to stop because he feels something suspicious about Yunsung, and says that the eyes are the window to a person's heart, and he feels Yunsung's eyes are full of trickery and anger. chang -soo says that Yunsung is lying and that he can't leave him alone and wants to pluck out his eyeballs. Yunsung already expected this, so he says chang -soo can't scare him because he is a bit bigger than him. He predicted he couldn't avoid this fight, so he learned how to fight a giant and tightened his hood around his face. Yunsung told his secret trainer that he was going to fight while wearing a mask, and as an adhesive is used to keep the mask on his face, it could fall off easily in the middle of the fight. He also told his trainer that since his opponent is huge, fighting from a distance would be risky. However, if he is fighting in close quarters, the mask could fall off. The trainer suggested Yunsung keep his hood up during the fight and tighten it. Yunsung remembers those instructions, and as he does that, Chang Su asks him what he will do. Yunsung suddenly grabs him by his waist, but Chang Su holds his hoodie and pulls it off his body. Yunsung remembers that the trainer told him to wear the hoodie tight, not to protect his mask but to make removing his clothes simpler. He advised Yunsung to close the distance first whenever the opponent is huge so that they can't use their fists, and when they try to grab him, he suggested targeting the blind spot revealed after the opponent takes off his hoodie. The trainer told Yunsung to make sure to target the blind spot first, and then end it with one blow because when fighting someone huge, there are no second chances. Yunsung, following those instructions, attacks Chang Su and asks if he is trying to with him because he is a newbie and looks easy. He breaks his nose and is about to attack him again. But Yongbum stops him and tells the both of them that it's enough. Yunsung eventually leaves Changsu, saying that he at least listens to what the head says, and this is what makes the team run smoothly. Changsu is furious at Yunsung, but when Yongbum says Yunsung is quite decent and he likes him, Changsu gets shocked. Yongbum asks Yunsung if he can take care of all the businesses Kyungmin took care of, but Changsu insists he not do so because Yunsung's eyes are like a snake's. Yongbum tells Changsu to listen when the head is talking and orders him to clean up Choi Kyungmin. Meanwhile, Yunsung, while leaving, thinks it was dangerous because he was not expecting Changsu to be fine after his knee kick and thinks that he needs to be more thorough in the future. The following day, Teacher O announces to the students to do their homework because there'll be a test next week and she tells Yongbum to follow her for a second. While going to the office, she tells Yongbum that she heard that Yongbum got a hundred on his mock test and asks if she should be looking forward to him getting a hundred on the CSAT. But Yongbum humbly replies that he is not on that level yet. Meanwhile, Yunsung hears Yongbum talking to Teacher Oh and thinks that Yongbum is not a model student, but he is acting like one and keeps his personal and professional lives separate. Yunsung knows Yongbum is living a perfect double life and he is like a fortified wall, though outside he is a gangster, in school, and in front of his family, he maintains a respectable appearance. On the other hand, during the class, Teacher Oh announced that Yongbum stood 10th in the whole school, and he gave credit to her for teaching well. Yongbum returns to his seat, and suddenly, Teacher Kim arrives there and tells Oh that he has to talk with Yongbum for a while. Kim takes Yongbum to the backside of the school and says he told him not to get caught by the fact that the tests were given to Yongbum. He shows Yongbum that there is news on the school's website that the tests have been leaked to some students. Yongbum asks Kim if he has given a test to another student, but Kim yells at him to stop his bullshit because he never gave tests to anyone other than him. Kim warns Yongbum that he is not going down alone. But Yongbum declares that he is not the one who leaked the news and told Kim to watch what he is saying because he is the one who got caught. Meanwhile, Yunsung hears their conversation, and he is the one who told Joanna about the school teacher, and she posted that news on the school's portal to leave everything in public opinion. Yongbum tells Kim to remove the post before too many people see it, but he doesn't know teacher Oh is present there with Yunsung hearing everything. Oh is shocked to hear this, and Yunsung tells her this is the real Yongbum but can't believe what she hears. Yunsung asks her if she wants to hear something more interesting, and then tells her that Yongbum also installed a hidden camera on her desk. She remembers that Yongbum gifted an aromatic diffuser to her, and she thanked him for that, but she didn't know there was a hidden camera inside it. Now, while sitting at her desk, she terrifyingly stares at that diffuser and remembers Yunsung told her that it's not a hidden camera but to monitor her moves, there is a surveillance camera. He says that he installed those things because Yongbum wanted to know everything about her. Oh was shocked to hear that and said they should report this to the police, but Yunsung suggested that she might get hurt if she reported all of this to the police. Yunsung tells that it's Yongbum's specialty to make the victim appear to be the perpetrator, and tells Oh to leave this matter to him, and he plans to start by cutting Yongbum's right hand. 
After school, Yeongbum meets Chung Soo and Yoon Sung and tells them that someone posted something to attack him on the school's bulletin board, and he suspects that it's either done by the head teacher or someone good at studying. When Yeongbum asks them what they think, Chung Soo replies that whether it's a teacher or a kid, they need to beat them first, but Yoon Sung calls him an idiot and asks if he always works like this. Yoon Sung says they only need to find out who posted the video, and there is no need to make things bigger. Chung Soo angrily grabs Yoon Sung's collar to beat him, but Yeongbum suddenly orders them to track the IP of the person who posted the news. Yoon Sung knew that he would do something like this, so he had already prepared a plan, gave Yeongbum an address, and tells there was a high schooler living there. Yoon Sung says they need to catch the culprit and tells Chang Soo to dispatch as he is giving him a chance to make some points. Yeong Bum tells Chang Soo to capture the culprit, and he immediately follows his orders. Yeong Bum thanks Yoon Sung for his help, and Yoon Sung offers to tell him first if something like this happens again, so he'll find something to help him. After that, Yeong Bum goes to Teacher Oh's office and she asks him for help because the principal assigned her to environmental sanitation and she was left with many things. Suddenly Yongbum is startled to see that the diffuser is missing and asks her if she threw it, but she replies that the principal took it away to use for environmental sanitation. She apologizes to Yongbum because he is the one who gave it to her, but his face turns red with anger. She remembers Yoon told her that Yongbum is serious about this kind of business because sexual crimes are more dangerous than anything else in their country. So that's why Yongbum's sex-related business is managed under strict leadership and control. Yoon Sung told her that even if there was a problem in Yongbum's business, he must have already made his escape paths ready. And in Oh's case, he must have already planned his escape route. Oh asked Yoon Sung what to do, and he told her not to worry because he would block that escape path. Yongbum, while standing outside the staff bathroom, thinks that if someone finds out about the surveillance camera installed in the staff's washroom diffuser, he won't be able to avoid it and will become a hidden bathroom camera criminal. Yongbum can't let that happen and wonders why the principal put the diffuser inside the bathroom. He decides to go inside the washroom and remove the diffuser from there. Yoon Sung told Joanna that he'd expose Yongbum to the public by making him a hidden bathroom camera criminal because it'll be easily tracked who placed the camera inside the diffuser through digital forensics. Yoon Sung knew that becoming a hidden camera criminal in South Korea was almost like a death sentence and told Joanna to wait and watch. Yongbum secretly gets into the female staff washroom to get the diffuser, but he sees that his diffuser is not there. On the other hand, the ethics teacher Min Dongwook is holding that diffuser in his hands and checks it, wondering what a diffuser is doing in their restroom. Yoon Sung tells Joanna that he plans to make Yongbum the worst pervert by putting the diffuser in the men's washroom. Min Dongwook notices the hidden camera and yells what kind of crazy bastard installed it there. Meanwhile, Yongbum can hear Min's voice coming from the men's washroom because he is standing beside the female bathroom and knows he is destroyed. On the contrary, Yoon Sung instructs Joanna to take this for public discussion. A male student from a prestigious school installed a hidden camera inside the male staff washroom. On the other hand, Chang Su goes to the province's last rank Yong's high school and blames that they posted a malicious post about Yongbum from Saha High School. Chang Su says he has the IP address of the computer that posted the news and it's located inside the computer room of Yong's high school. The students of that school don't care about what Chang Su is saying and they ask if he has money but he says silent and wonders if he got deceived by Yoon Sung. Chang Su gets mad. He beats all the students in the computer room and says that Lee Yoon Sung is dead now. On the other hand, the teachers examine the camera and decide to call the police, but Yong Bum thinks there is no evidence, so he'll say he knows nothing. Min says that he knows how to catch that bastard who installed the camera because he learned how to do digital forensics on a camera as he learned it during the sexual crimes awareness lesson last time. Min says he can also search the camera model and find the date and purchase location because he needs to root these camera criminals out. Yoon Sung knew that Yongbum will feel fear that he will become a sexual offender in Korea. After going home, Yongbum worryingly thinks that previously he was able to get away with this with the help of teacher Kim. But now he thinks about what he should do to solve this issue. Suddenly he gets a call from Yoon Sung to report to him about their schedule and that he has done what he ordered and made 10 new ID cards. Yoon Sung reports that only one thing is left, making a deal with the used car dealer, but Yongbum replies that they'll talk about this tomorrow. When Yoon Sung asks him what's wrong and if it's about the commotion at the school earlier, Yongbum stays quiet. Yoon Sung tells Yongbum that he can talk to him whenever he wants and that he'll try to help him as much as possible because he is his head. He called Yoon Sung to meet him and told him that he bought an automatic diffuser which is blue, for personal reasons 
but it's now in the ethics teacher's drawer, and he tells Yoon-sung to take it out. Yoon-sung does that and brings him the diffuser and says that he is not sure why Yeongbum needs this but clears that now he has nothing to do with that matter. Yoon-sung leaves, and Yeongbum checks the diffuser, but suddenly, he notices something blinking under the diffuser. Meanwhile, while driving towards the location, Teacher Min tells Teacher Oh that he is about to reach the tracker's location. Ming gave the smart tag to Miss Oh to stick under the diffuser and leave it inside the bathroom, and then she'll see Yongbum's real face. She did so, and when she was watching Yongbum sneaking into the staff washroom, Teacher Min arrived and asked her what she was doing there. Bo told Min to go and check the diffuser inside the male washroom and told him to follow the tracker's location. While Min is reaching the location, Oh tells him that she is sure the person they'll find out is the real perpetrator. Meanwhile, Yongbum breaks the diffuser to find its SD card, and as he finds it, Teacher Min arrives and starts following him. Yongbum runs fast to escape from there because he'll be dead if he gets caught, and Min runs after him and yells at him to stop. Yongbum manages to hide behind a car in the parking lot and breaks the SD card to end this and thinks that now he only needs to clean up the remains of the diffuser. Nin yells at the culprit to come out, and his ethics teacher says to give him one last chance if he turns himself in after the count of three. Nin counts three, and Yongbum doesn't come out, but suddenly Siri talks on Yongbum's phone, and he gets caught by Min. On the other hand, while Yunsung is talking to Joanna on the phone, Changsu suddenly arrives looking for him with his hands covered in blood. On the contrary, Min says he has been dealing with men like Yongbum for a decade but suddenly Yongbum again runs away, and he starts chasing him. Simultaneously, Changsu says he doesn't know what Yunsung is hiding, but he'll kill him, and Yunsung replies that Changsu figured it out faster than he expected because he thought he would forever be an idiot. Changsu tries to punch Yunsung, but he dodges his attacks and slams him down on the floor. Changsu manages to get up and says he'll finish Yunsung today and that the people of his hometown can control rage, and the rule is to calm down, and then he'll easily win. He manages to push Yunsung back, and Yunsung questions him why he agreed to be Yongbum's right hand and is doing all his dirty work. Changsu's mother was ill and worried about the hospital fee, but he told her not to worry because his friend was the grandson of the hospital owner, and he promised to help him. When Changsu says Yunsung will not understand that he needs Yongbum's help, Yunsung immediately throws a cap on his eyes, saying that he has no interest in sentimental stories and kicking Changsu down. Yunsung, with his shirt's arm, chokes Changsu and remembers that it's Houdini choke that his trainer taught him. He strangles Changsu with his clothes making him feel unconscious, but he uses his full spirit to get up. Yunsung knows Changsu's courage is momentary and says he'll ensure he passes out completely. When Changsu's consciousness began to fade, he suddenly remembered the scene he saw when he was little. Changsu was watching a TV show about animals in which the host tells that crocodiles are in the same family as reptiles and are one of the top predators in the Amazon. The host says that they primarily prey on land animals going into the water, and their greatest characteristic is that once they bite their prey, they won't let go. They warn the viewers to be cautious if they come across a crocodile because the eyes of the deer there might just be theirs. Changsu feels that Yunsung is just like a crocodile who doesn't let go once bites. Yunsung leaves Changsu after he passes out and tells Joanna to get ready and come there. Yunsung says he'll finish this and will inform Yongbum of the truth. Meanwhile, Min captures Yongbum from his leg and says he won't let him go, but Yongbum starts kicking Min's face to free himself. Yongbum yells at Min to do nothing but teach because he is a teacher and says that if Min lets this slide, the situation will roll over. He kicks Min's face until he passes out and is covered in blood. When Yongbum is walking away, suddenly, the police arrive, and he runs from there. He tries to call Changsu, but he doesn't pick up, and he wonders what Changsu is doing because he told him not to miss his calls. Suddenly Yunsun arrives and asks Yongbum what he is doing there, but Yongbum questions him what he is doing. Yunsung says that this is the front of Yongbum's building, and he came there to take care of some business Yongbum didn't realize that he had come all the way to his building while trying to escape from the police. He leans on Yunsung and asks him to take him to his office because he is the only one he can trust now. Yunsung tells him not to worry and says he'll take him there but ask him rather than going to his office, why don't he stay outside? Yongbum asks him what he is saying. But suddenly, Yunsung starts to choke him and tells him to accompany him somewhere for a while because he has something to discuss. Yongbum faints, and when he wakes up, he finds himself on a diving board. He gets startled and falls into the swimming pool. Yongbum starts to panic because he can't swim when he tries to step on the pool floor. His feet start to bleed, and he sees thumb pins on the bottom of the pool. He starts yelling that there are too many tacks on the pool floor, and then he holds the rope in the pool to stop himself from drowning. 
Suddenly he sees Yoon Sung sitting on a chair there and asks him why he is doing this to him. Yoon Sung asks if he remembers the tale of the little mermaid who wanted a pair of legs and asks him if he does not know it. Young Bum doesn't remember what he is talking about, and Yoon Sung says he'll help him remember it, and he opens the pool's drain. Yoon Sung's sister Lee Na Hyun was an invincible athlete swimmer, and she got first prizes in different competitions Yoon Sung, and their mother always cheered for her. She lost both legs in an accident but didn't give in, rather, she started swimming and became famous in no time. Eunice's, her sister, got contacted by various media platforms, and her fave played a great part in her popularity, and he respected her sister. One day his mother told him to hurry up and eat the food because they had to go to court for Nahian's accident case. The judge starts the proceedings and reads that the defendant claims that he mistook the accelerator for a break and the victim's claim that the accident was caused intentionally makes no sense. The judge says that the defendant is underage and has also never received any formal driving training, and there is no evidence because there is no CCTV in the place of the accident. The vehicle's black box was also turned off. Hence, the judge only announces 180 hours of volunteer work to the defendant Yongbum. After going home, Nahyun locked herself in the room and started crying after watching the news about her case online. Yongbum not only stopped there, and the most unfair thing was that the black box that was claimed to be off recorded the whole conversation, which Yongbum cleverly edited and released in public, making Nahian a perpetrator in the public's opinion. She fell prey to people's comments, and it felt like stepping on alls, and the people only saw the one-sided story and judged her. One day he tried to call her sister, but she didn't pick up and committed suicide by jumping off a building. Yoonsung says The Little Mermaid is a story about the unrequited love of a princess who lives under the sea. Yoonsung reached outside the building at the same time when his sister fell from the building on a car, and the most important character of the story, his sister, who was more mature than anybody else, ended up being just an ordinary high schooler. Yoonsung asks Yongbum if he remembers now what he is talking about and says he'll give him a hint if he still doesn't remember. Yoonsung walks into the empty pool towards Yongbum and gives him a hint of a black box, but he still doesn't remember, so Yongbum punches him down, saying that he always wanted to roll him down a road filled with thrones. The pins injure Yongbum's back, and he yells at Yoonsung, asking who he is and why he is doing this to him. Yoonsung hangs Yongbum above the pins and says he is Lee Yoonsung from Sanjun Middle School, first grade, class 2, and Lee Nahyun's brother, Lee Yoonsung. Yongbum remembers him and yells that what he is doing to him is illegal and is sure that the CCTV caught it, but Yoonsung throws him on the pins. The tacks prick his face and he starts screaming in pain, but Yoonsung still starts punching his face while telling him not to worry about the CCTV and other evidence because he came there using his car and asked him if it was the same car he hit his sister with. Yoonsung took the car keys out of his pocket and asked Yongbum how he could still have the audacity to ride that car and ask if he and his sister were nothing more than bugs to him. Yongbum yells that he is not responsible for burning his house and killing his sister and everything happens because Yoonsung is retarded. Yoonsung slaps his face and says he still hasn't changed and is nothing more than garbage and a selfish bastard. Yoonsung keeps bashing his face and tells him never to forget the name Lee Nahyun whose legs he took away, and after taking her voice, he also took away her life. Yoonsung says the name of that mermaid princess is Lee Nahyun, and he also has a tattoo of her on his body. Yongbum's face is covered in blood, and Yoonsung gives him a last chance to apologize to him and his sister. But Yongbum starts to laugh and says how he can apologize to her sister, who is burning in hell. Suddenly Changsu arrives there, and Yongbum asks him where he is because he keeps calling him. He asks Changsu for help, but Changsu punches him down and has tears in his eyes because a while ago Yoonsung showed him some documents after beating him up, showing how Yongbum fooled him all that time. Joanna told Changsu that his mom's sickness needed to be operated on immediately, but Yongbum, for the sake of using him, deliberately dragged it and neglected his mom. They showed Changsu the proof that his mother was suffering from ephemeral hernia, and if she had gotten surgery right away, her illness wouldn't have gone on so long. Changsu is mad at Yongbum because even if he files a lawsuit, his winning rate is less than 1%, and if he tries to spread it to the media, Yongbum will block it all. Yoonsung told Changsu that he and his mother would have a hard time. Changsu tells Yongbum that he knows he didn't treat his mother on purpose, and because of him, his mother is sick, so he'll make him suffer too. Yongbum tells Changsu to wait a minute before he hits him and tells him that he can't change anything because he has no evidence. But Changsu says laws and evidence don't matter to him. 
he knows that he'll lose in the court against Yongbum because he doesn't have any money, so he decides to do what he is best at and tells Yongbum to stand up because he is going to kill him and says it's the only way for revenge in Korea. Yongbum told Changsu that his mother couldn't be operated on because the effects would be greater as she was not young anymore and told him that the doctors suggested that it's better for her just to get hospitalized. Changsu didn't have money, and Yongbum told him not to worry about it and said to help him for his mother's sake and, in return, asked him to do a few things for him. Changsu trusted him until the end to take care of his mom. But after Yoon showed him the proof and told him he missed the timing for his mother's operation and she needed to stay hospitalized for the rest of her life, he realized that Yongbum was aiming for that the whole time. Changsu continues punching his face to beat him to death because he held his mother hostage so that Changsu can't go anywhere. Yoon stops Changsu because if he continues like this, he'll never be able to pay his mother's hospital bills, and then Changsu leaves him. Changsu leaves, telling Yongbum to give him money for his mother's hospital bill by next week, so he'll take his mom to another hospital, and warns that if Yongbum doesn't do that, he'll kill him that time. Yongbum wonders how Yunsung knows all of this, and suddenly, Yunsung takes out an external drive that Yongbum kept in a drawer on the sixth floor of his building. Yunsung learned about the drive from Sangwook, which has all records of his misdeeds. Yunsung says he didn't sneak into Yongbum's group for no reason. He did that because his purpose was to destroy him, and that's why he had to hide his identity. Yunsung says it's all over, and there is nothing left for Yongbum. Yongbum apologizes that it's all his fault. He starts crying and says he sinned heavily and apologizes to Yunsung that he is asking for his forgiveness so late. He says he'll turn himself in and atone for his sins for the rest of his life, but while saying that, he suddenly picks up the car keys from the floor and runs to escape. He tries to run away in the car. But Yunsung tells him to get out and apologizes because there will be no turning back if he runs now. Yongbum shows him the middle finger and runs away in the car, but after driving for a while, he suddenly sees some barriers on the road and tries to apply brakes, but they don't work. On the other hand, Joanna tells Yunsung not to worry because the perimeter is under her control, and there won't be any vehicle that'll enter it other than Yongbum's. Yongbum's car falls from the road after hitting the barriers, and Yunsung feels now his sister can rest at ease. After that, Joanna went to Yongbum's house and showed the evidence of all the evil deeds of Yongbum to his parents. She tells that if she leaves the evidence to the police, they'll receive a huge blow, and tells them to make their decision. When Yongbum's father asks if she is threatening them, Joanna replies that they don't know what household they are dealing with and shows him his picture with the judge of the previous driving without a license case. Joanna also has the record of their settlement deposit. Yongbum's father tells her to stop and asks what she wants. On the other hand, Yongbum's spinal cord is injured, and his left upper and lower nerves are damaged. The doctor told Yongbum's parents that it'll be hard for Yongbum to lead a normal life, and that he won't be able to walk for the rest of his life. He yells at his parents to leave him alone, but suddenly, two male nurses from a psychiatric hospital arrive and drag him with them. Joanna gave his parents the option of the psychiatric hospital because it's preferable to the juvenile detention center or prison, and she gave them the consent paper for the hospitalization of Yongbum. She told them that the patient's discharge would only be possible if the primary approver agreed, and they had no choice but to sign it. Joanna texts Yunsung informing them that Yongbum's parents signed the documents, and after that news, Yunsung decides to proceed with the next bastard. Simultaneously, an icon of the young generation, a famous actor Kang Jun Hyuk is sitting in an interview. He is a rising rookie actor with a handsome face and cunning mouth, and there's much talk about his having many women's issues. The host says H has some sensitive questions and asks Jun Hyuk how his school days were but he counter-questions the reporter and asks him how his school days were because he also joined the entertainment industry at a young age. When the reporter replies that his school life went smoothly, Jun Hyuk also says that he also passed his school life smoothly. He suddenly yells at the manager for taking this kind of interview, and meanwhile, Yoon also arrives there wearing a helmet. Yoon remembers how his next target bullet him. He gave an envelope to Jun Hyuk's manager there, telling him that he had a came there for a delivery. Jun Hyuk yells at his manager to call the car, and he is leaving the interview, but the manager says there was a quick service earlier, and a fan sent him something. While leaving the shoot location, Yoon Sung thinks he'll know what it is once he opens the package because it's all the things that he has done to him, and it's the meaning of his third tattoo. Jun Hyuk tells the manager to give him the packet, but the manager replies that it's for reporter Shin Minwoo. Minwoo is surprised to receive the delivery, and when he opens it, he finds a picture inside it which Jun Hyuk snatches from him because he also wants to see what it is. Minwoo's face turned pale, 
and Jun Hyuk asked him who are the thugs in the picture and why one of them resembled Minwoo. While everyone is taking a break, Minwoo grabs Jun Hyuk's face and tells him to pretend he saw nothing. Otherwise, he'll kill him. Meanwhile, Yoon walking on the roadside, thinks that Minwoo is more vicious than Yeongbum but says he'll be the one who will drag him straight to hell from the top. When the shooting staff announces that the shooting will resume soon, Minwoo leaves Jun Hyuk's face and tell him to prepare for the shoot. When he notices that the staff is watching them, he pretends and apologizes to Jun Hyuk that he is not good at interviewing and says that he'll ask him a different question. Jun Hyuk feels that Minwoo is crazy and on the other hand, Joanna, after hearing that Minwoo is the first person who bullied Yoon Sung, also says that he is a lunatic. Yoon Sung tells her that Park Sang Chiol and Yeongbum started bullying him after watching Minwoo. Joanna asks him why they started bullying him and if he did something wrong, but when he replies that they did it just for fun, Joanna is shocked to hear that. Yoon Sung tells her that his bullying started for no reason and when four years ago, he went to Sanjun Middle School. Minwoo pushed him aside to enter the school gate and walked inside without looking at him. Yoon Sung wondered what was wrong with that kid, but he remembered that they both attended the same elementary school, but didn't know each other well. Based on the rumors he heard that Minwoo was a delinquent, he had a lot of fear during those days, so he tried to avoid those guys. One day he had to go to the washroom because of a stomachache, and he saw that delinquent students were also there. He decided to pee and go out but unintentionally caught the bully's attention. After using the washroom, he returned to the class, but suddenly Minwoo arrived and asked him to exchange seats for a minute. He agreed, but it was strange that the guy he never talked to suddenly asked him for a favor. He naively thought it was a simple favor, but he was chosen. During the next lecture, Yoon Sung's stomach started making noises again because he didn't use the restroom last time, and it was becoming unable for him to control. Suddenly Minwoo sitting behind him tells him he will sleep and asks him to cover him. Until break time, Yoon Sung could not go to the toilet, to be precise, Minwoo didn't let him go intentionally. During the break, when he went to the washroom, he noticed some guys standing outside the bathroom, and when he looked up, they were making his video. Minwoo knew how to turn someone into an outcast for a childish reason in no time, and he chose Yoon Sung because he looked easy and like a weakling to him. Minwoo told Han Jehoon to harass Yoon Sung sexually, but then he said he was joking and left. However, Jehoon was the freak who could do that, and he acted upon that filthy idea because of which Yoon Sung had to endure hell. Back to the present, Minwoo inquires if anyone sent him a quick service, but they reply that they didn't, and he wonders who sent him that picture. He tries to contact Yongbum, but he doesn't get a reply and starts to think why a quick service delivery man knows nothing about him. While going home from the shoot with his driver, Yoon Sung surpasses his van on a bike. Yoon Sung decides to exact his vengeance on him in a different way than Jo Yongbum. While Minwoo's driver is talking to him, Minwoo suddenly notices a bike riding toward his car, so he yells at his driver to look ahead. Yoon Sung takes care of Yongbum with a meticulous plan, but he decides to crush Minwoo without holding anything back and plans to take everything from him. Yoon Sung stops their van, and after breaking Minwoo's side mirror, he drags him out of the car to execute his master plan on him. 